Hello, everyone. My name is Konstantin. I, I work for IBM. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, shared memory communications protocol in software defined storage. So, welcome to my presentation. First of all, I will make an overview of software defined storage and uh, SMC protocol. So, software defined storage is a storage framework that isolates uh, hardware from storage so software. So it runs on uh, on a commodity uh, hardware instead of specific uh, hardware proprietary components. So and it helps users to uh, to stay uh, free from vendor lock-ins and remain hardware independent. So uh, uh, software defined sto storage is uh, scalable and provides uh, many useful features such as thin provisioning, data deduplication, replication, snapshots, uh, backups. And let me uh, uh, introduce one of the example of software defined storage. It's uh, IBM storage scale product or uh, also known as GPFS or general parallel file system. So it is clustered file system that can be uh, deployed in uh, shared disk or shared nothing mode and uh, it is designed to run on uh, for high-performance uh, high applications and uh, used in many of the largest supercomputers in the world. Uh, so typical cluster can uh, have up to 10,000 nodes and uh, uh, disks which are, uh, can be any type of uh, block storage device are shared between the nodes. So data and metadata are uh, available on any node. And file system is parallel, so this means that data and metadata flow from uh, nodes to disks in parallel. Uh, and uh, in order to, uh, to, have the, uh, to achieve the reasonably good uh, storage performance, we need to have very reliable network connections bet, uh, between the nodes because all nodes are communicating uh, over the network. And in my presentation, I will show how we could improve the throughput between the nodes uh, using shared memory communication protocol on uh, Linux on IBM Z platform in storage scale. So uh, shared memory communications or SMC protocol is an, uh, an addition to TCP IP. Uh, it allows two SMC capable peers to communicate using memory buffers, and uh, which improves the throughput, lowers latency, and at the same time maintains all existing functions. Uh, so there are two types of uh, SMC. SM SMC direct memory access, or, or SMCD, it, uh, using internal shared memory device and is used for communications within the one uh, IBM C physical server. And SMC over RDMA or uh, SMCR uh, using Rocky adapters. Uh, SM SMCR is used for communication between uh, different physical servers. And now in, uh, in storage scale, we support SMCD only and SMCR is not supported. So the performance improvement uh, is achieved by bypassing TCP IP stack uh, uh, processing on both sides. So the data are written directly into the memory. And uh, instead of using TCP IP, uh, SMCD uses internal shared memory or ISM technology. ISM is a virtual adapter in Linux, virtual device, and so that you don't uh, need to have, have uh, any additional uh, physical hardware, such as adapters, uh, uh, switches, uh, uh, car uh, card slots, and so on. And at the same time, you, you don't need uh, you don't need to uh, change resources and uh, network topology. So you don't have to change uh, IP addresses, uh, host names, and uh, all security features are preserved. So data uh, that travel across the uh, 
memory between the operating system are protected with authentication, encryption, IP filters, and so on. Uh, but SMC cannot completely replace the traditional connectivity. Uh, there are two major reasons for that. Uh, uh, first is uh, SMC supp uh, supports TCP only, and non-TCP-based traffic, such as UDP, cannot use SMC. And uh, the second reason is the initial uh, the connection should be initiated through TCP IP. So the, uh, therefore both communications parties must be must support uh, SMC. And uh, then after the connection is initiated through TCP IP, it data transfer uses SMC protocol within the scope of this connection. And uh, unless both communication partners support SMC, the connection automatically falls back to TCP IP. So there are uh, two, uh, two methods to enable uh, SMC D in your application. Uh, first is to uh, replace all socket calls, first parameter IFNet with IFSMC and uh, recompile your application. Uh, but if you don't uh, have the source code or don't want to recompile it, the, uh, there is another method available by using pre a preloaded library from open source SMC tools package, which intercepts all socket calls uh, and uh, dy uh, dynamically replaces IF init with uh, IF SMC. In this case, you don't have to modify your application. Oh. So SMC tools a package provides commands that uh, helps you to, to manage connections that use SMC protocol. You can obtain it at uh, GitHub or install from distros. So let me introduce some most important commands. SMCD stat commands is used to display different statistics uh, about SMC uh, protocol such as number of total connections, number of SMC connections, number of TCP fallbacks, uh, send and receive buffers information such as uh, buffer sizes and buffer full errors. Uh, the statistics can be reset uh, using the reset option. So next command is SMCSS. It can display information about active connections and error codes when the connection falls back to TCP uh, and using its main page you can check uh, that error code and uh, description. And uh, uh, to use uh, SMC for existing applications, uh, SMC tools package provides SMC run, run commands uh, and you can prefix SMC run and, uh, when starting your application and it, it, will, be auto, uh, it will automatically use SMC protocol. So it's very easy to configure SMCD in Linux. First you need to verify uh, ISM device availability using LSPCI command, then install SMC tools package and uh, disable or set to permissive mode SA Linux. Uh, the reason for that is that standard distros policy uh, do not include SMC sockets. No. So now let me share my experience in enabling SMCD in uh, storage scale. So during the development, we have uh, replaced all uh, IFSMC sockets with uh, IF inlet sockets with IFSMC sockets. Uh, and re uh, recompiled, but after that uh, uh, we have discovered one problem. So we could not make sure that all connections are really using uh, SMC protocol and uh, there are no fallbacks to TCP IP. And the reason for that is, is that uh, SMCD is implemented at low level, the kernel of firmware, and uh, socket calls always return successful uh, return code, uh, even the connection falls back to TCP. So for this reason, we created a, a Python helper scripts that uh, check requirements, 
monitor uh, different SMC events and uh, check the con that connections are really using SMC mode. So here you can see how we check the prerequisites, operating systems, hardware version, uh, packages installed, and ISM device availability. And on the right hand side you can see uh, SMCD events that are generated uh, in storage scale um, monitoring component system health. So we uh, to implement it we parse output from different SMC tools commands and uh, generate the appropriate events. So for example if there are more than 10% SMC fallbacks then we generate a large number of uh, TCP fallbacks event. So here you can see how we check that connections are really using SMCD protocol and uh, we uh, to implement this we used SMC check command from SMC tools package and uh, on on server uh, we start on remote host uh, is SMC check with dash s option as a server and then uh, make a client connection from our host and um, make sure that it's, it's successful. In case of errors so or TCP fallbacks, it will be reported. So here you can see example of uh, successful connection. And uh, at, uh, there is an advanced mode where all nodes are checking against each, uh, with, with every node uh, the connection. So we use uh, here different port numbers so that all these connections can be run in parallel. So let me show how to tune some socket parameter in Linux to get the best from SMCD protocol. So it is recommended to increase the default buffer sizes in Linux. Um, so mm, bef because bigger sizes are usually beneficial for streaming workloads, but uh, they also might benefit for five, five high frequency uh, request response workloads and uh, we uh, we use 512 kilobytes it's as a buffer size uh, in storage scale it's enough for most workloads and the maximum value can be one megabyte so uh, the actual buffer sizes can be checked with uh, smc stat command and you can replace it uh, default and uh, maximum buffer size with C C CTL Linux command. So now, now let me show you the performance comparison. So we can uh, we have measured the network performance with storage scale in SDPR tool, uh, and uh, as you can see, uh, the CPU usage is approximately the same between uh, TCP/IP and SMCD but the throughput is much higher for uh, SMC uh, than this for TCP. So if you take a look how much data can be, how much CPU was spent to transfer the certain amount of data, you can see that SMCD is more efficient. And we have also measured, uh, in addition to network performance, we have also measured I.O. performance using another storage scale tool. Um, GPF perf, which uh, which creates large files and read and write them, and these files are of course synchronized between all of the nodes. And on the charts here, you can see uh, the efficiency, which is data uh, data rate divided uh, by CPU utilization. So, and this test, IO test, also demonstrated that the efficiency is higher for SMCD in comparison with TCP IP. So now that's all from my side. Now you know how to enable SMCD in any of your application on Linux on IBM Z platform. So thank you for attending my presentation. <laughs>